The Lord be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Today is Easter Wednesday, and in celebration of Easter Wednesday, we will have a small, short devotion for you once again. Uh, we will open with the first page, page 219 of Matins. We'll sing the opening versicles, the Gloria Patri, and the praise response. So just page 219 of Matins. Now the reason we're doing Matins today on Easter Wednesday is you'll notice that in the Gospel reading, it's from John chapter 21. It's also the text for Vicar's homily. And it is the story of Jesus providing breakfast for his disciples after they catch a miraculous uh, number of fish. Also, the hymn of the day. So we'll do Matins versicles on page 219. Then we'll have the lessons. Uh, then the hymn of the day is hymn 485. And Vicar and I just tried to learn it uh, just before. So we will, we will be singing this for the first time uh, as long, uh, along with you uh, at home. And uh, it's a wonderful hymn. It is the hymn of the day, not only just because it's connected to Easter Wednesday, but because it actually teaches the gospel text perfectly. It's a beautiful hymn. Um, so we hope you enjoyed that also. And then we'll have the homily, the Lord's Prayer, and the benediction. We stand to sing our opening versicles. <clears throat> o Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. The first reading for the Wednesday after the resurrection of our Lord is from Acts chapter 3. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And brothers, and now brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Colossians chapter 3. If, then, you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked, when you were living in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, 
we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing our hymn of the day, <clears throat> hymn 485, Long Before the World is Waking. Long before the world is waking, morning mist on Galilee, from the shore as dawn is breaking, Jesus calls across the sea, hails the boats of weary men, bids them cast their nets again. So they cast, and all their heaving cannot haul their catch aboard. John in wonder turns, perceiving, cries aloud, it is the Lord. Peter waits for nothing more, plunges in to swim ashore. Charcoal embers brightly burning, bread and fish upon them laid. Jesus stands at day's returning, in his risen life arrayed. As of old his friends to greet, here is breakfast, come and eat. Christ is risen, grief and sighing, sins and sorrows fall behind. Fear and failure, doubt denying, full and free forgiveness find. All the soul's dark night is past, morning breaks in joy at last. Morning breaks and Jesus meets us, feeds and comforts pardon still. As his faithful friends he greets us, partners of his work and will. All our days on every shore, Christ is ours forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dear saints in Christ, 
The 21st chapter of St. John's Gospel account, which we just heard, is a fitting text as we at Zion end our celebration of the Feast of the Resurrection and start our time in the season of Easter. It's a wonderful picture and description of what life in the church looks like now that our Lord and Savior Jesus has been resurrected. You see, throughout this reading, Jesus is the source of everything. Without Jesus, the disciples are fruitless and hungry, and they cannot catch any fish. But at Jesus' command, they catch 153 fish and are well breakfasted. This text should remind us then, especially as we venture into the Easter season, that the mission of the Holy Christian Church is not really open to human creativity or our own efforts and endeavors, but it is entirely dependent on Jesus' commands and institutions. Certainly we have a tendency, in part because we're Americans, to equate the gospel message with freedom from regulations and such. But that's not quite the case. If the disciples would have said, hey, thanks for the advice, and just kept on fishing the way that they were, then they would have continued to get skunked. If Jesus had not invited them to cook their fish over his fire, they would have gone hungry that morning. The gospel message then, at least according to St. John in this text, isn't so much about freedom and creativity, but instead it's about the abundance and provision that is found in Jesus' word. But we must be careful with our perspective here. It's not as if we can just add Jesus to our normal routine and expect our paychecks to be 153 times greater or something weird like that. Jesus did not come into this world so that you would be healthy, wealthy, and wise all the time. He did come into this world, however, that you might have life and have it eternally. He came so that you might have forgiveness of all of your sins. He came so that you would have the peace that passes all understanding. Without Jesus, you would have none of these things. Your nets would be empty. But with Jesus, you have them all in abundance, and your nets can never break. One other thing about this text that is particularly applicable to the Holy Christian Church is that the disciples did not recognize Jesus until he had worked his wonders and mighty deeds among them. We might be tempted to think, that you and I need to experience some out-of-the-ordinary miracle, like a faith healing or finding the Blessed, Mother Virgin, uh, the Blessed Virgin's image on our French toast. But those things, frankly, are just silly in comparison to the mighty deeds that Jesus has already done in your midst. For in your baptism, you put on Christ. In Holy Communion, you eat Christ. In the preaching of the Gospel, you are called, gathered, and enlightened by God's Word. What greater miracles could you imagine than these? So, dear Christians, as we head into the season of Easter, remind yourself that you are part of the Holy Christian Church, the true Catholic or universal Church, the church that Jesus himself, by his word, institutes. A church which has no political or ethnic boundaries. This is the church in which the mighty works and miracles of the resurrected Jesus happen on a daily basis. At every baptism, at every celebration of the Lord's Supper, at every absolution, just think. 153 fish. So rejoice in these miracles, dear Christian. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.